Today I'm going to show you how to make a slinky rig for fishing. They look like this. They're really easy to make. I'll show you how to make them and then I'll show you how to rig them up uh, to catch fish, uh, especially good in flowing waters, rivers and streams. And stuff. Okay, so what you need is just some, some shoelacing, some of this flat shoelacing. Um, some this big fat stuff is nice. I also sometimes use thinner, thinner stuff to make smaller weights. We we'll use the big stuff for this example. And you're just going to want to cut off a section of this. You don't need the end. I've already cut that off. Uh, let's see. We'll make a smaller one. Cut it off, and what you see is that this stuff is actually hollow. You can actually pry it open on one end. And uh, it's a flattened cylinder, basically. So we'll be able to stuff stuff in there. So what we do, take some needle nose pliers, hold on to this stuff, and I leave a little bit of on one edge there. And you use a flame, either from a lighter or a candle or a match if you're fast. And we're going to heat up this end and melt it. So you, you, the shoelace needs to be some sort of synthetic material, not cotton. Cotton's not going to melt. Okay? And then I take it and I just quickly dip it into a little bit of water to cool it off. Just want to dip the end because if this whole thing gets wet you're not going to be able to seal up the other end. Okay, so that's cool. It's sealed. And then I'm going to need some, some sort of weight, some ball bearings. And you can get ball bearings in all sorts of different sizes. Uh, big ones for big weights, smaller ones for smaller weights. You can also use steel shot from like a shotgun cartridge. Um, you can use lead shot. One of the nice things about these though is that by using the steel bearings, if we happen to lose one of these in the water, we're not losing a lead weight and we're not introducing lead, a heavy metal, into the environment. Um, so these are a little, these are a little safer for everybody. Um, and you can, you can be technical and you can go and measure these, like weigh them and figure out exactly how many you need to make like a quarter ounce weight or a half ounce weight or whatever. I don't bother doing that. I just kind of make these in various sizes and then once on the water, I guess what I need. And then if I need a bigger weight, I just grab a bigger one because I make a variety of different sizes. So we just feed these bearings right into the end and squish them down to the, to the closed end. Let's see, we'll make a sixer. So I'll put six bearings in here. Squeeze them all down to the end. Grab the pliers, hold on to the open end, leaving a little, a little space there. Some material to melt. Take our flame, melt that closed. Probably want to do this in a well ventilated area because melting plastic does give off some kind of nasty fumes. Dip that in water to cool it off, and there we go. As you can see, I've left a little bit of space in here so that the, the bearings can move around a little bit, and that makes these weights virtually snag free. Uh, the way I rig these things up. So I have a hook, attach one to two feet of line, and that goes onto a swivel, standard swivel. Um, then that swivel gets tied onto the main line, the line that goes to a rod and reel. But before you tie that on, you want to add on a little plastic bead. This is optional, but it does make um, this a little nicer because um, after that we put on a standard snap swivel and the bead just prevents these two swivels from kind of getting tangled up. It's not necessary but I find it helpful. So our standard snap swivel is where we attach our weight. Some people like heat up a nail and burn a little hole in the end of these. I find that that's unnecessary at least with the type of swivels, snap swivels I use. Pretty thin thin wire and I just stick these right through the 
shoelace material. Just pop them right through. Close that swivel, or close that snap, and there you go. And the way this works, this weight is free to move around. And so you cast this out into stream or river, and these work really well in flowing water, although I have used them in lakes too. They work just fine. Um, but they're really nice in flowing water. Throw it out, the weight sits on the bottom, and then your hook with your bait is then free to move around. Uh, and it provides a more natural presentation of your bait, whether that's a worm or a minnow or something. And like I said, these are virtually snag free because because several reasons. Um, they're designed, they're long and skinny, they're flexible, uh, and if they get snagged up on a rock, which are rocks are very common around here in the Mississippi, um, they get snagged on a rock, um, it can move around, these bearings can move around a little bit, and usually it just takes a little bit of a tug and they, they slide right free. Um, and they work really well, I think. So there you go. Simple, easy, and they work, work really well. So go make some.